Hello, my name is David and welcome back to my channel. Today we're continuing the library tour and we are looking at 10 more books, which is going to roll us right up evenly onto the doorstep of Burroughs, where, so my next library tour video is going to be all of the Burroughs that are in kind of the, the paperback size. There's a lot of them. I believe all 11 of the Barsoom and all 24 of the Tarzan, plus a couple others, I think. Uh, and I'll fit all of those into one video. And uh, that, that'll take me through pretty much an entire shelf worth of stuff. <laughs> but before we get there, we have to go through books like this. So this is First Writer's Call. So this is Kristen Britton Retain. Uh, this is the sequel to Green Rider, which we saw on the last library tour. So this is book two. I think I have three and four in trade paperback and hardcover. So I've got this ready. You know, nice beat up reading copy. Ready to rock and roll when I get around to reading that series. So now we go into Terry Brooks. So this is First King of Shannara. So this is ordered there because it says it's a prequel. We're not going to read the back of this one. What we are going to read the back of instead is this one right here, Sword of Shannara by Terry Brooks. So it tells me it's volume one. The Sword of Shannara is the first volume of the classic series that has become one of the most popular fantasy tales of all time. Because it's pretty much a Lord of the Rings ripoff. I do remember that. Uh, this book, the, the others not so much, but this one, uh, very, very closely imitates a lot of what Tolkien does well but does not do it nearly as well as Tolkien. Long ago, the wars of the ancient evil ruined the world. In peaceful shady vale, half-elven Shea Olmsford knows little of such troubles. But the supposedly dead warlock lord is plotting to destroy everything in his wake. The sole weapon against this power of darkness is the Sword of Shannara, which can only be used by a true heir of Shannara. On Shea, the last of the bloodline, rest the hope of all the races. Thus begins the enthralling Shannara epic, a spell-binding tale of adventure, magic, and myth. Now, these all came in a lot with a couple other books. So we have the Elfstones of Shannara, which is volume two. It's a better book, if memory serves. I've got this right here. So this is the Voyage of the Jural Shannara, book one. Ilsa Witch. Isle Witch? Sure. Have not read this series. But this is book one in the series. Don't want to read it in case it spoils something from one of the others. But this says, say, more than 20 years have passed since Terry Brooks set the new stand for the genre in his first astounding novel, The Sword of Shannara, the now classic beginning of a centuries-long struggle between good and evil. Now Brooks embarks on what promises to be his masterpiece. And then the last of the Brooks here, we have Genesis of Shannara. So this is The Elves of Sintra. This is a book two, I believe, in that series. So that's what I have for Terry Brooks. I'm not convinced that I feel a need to revisit his original trilogy in the prequel or his later ones. Weigh in. Those of you that have read Brooks worth hanging around to, to read at some point in time? Or should I just move along in the same way that I probably would move on from any David Eddings that I would have had? Loved it to death as a preteen and a young teenager but I don't know that I would enjoy it as much now as I did then. Um, although part of me does want to reread some of it. So now we move into Frederick Brown, Rogue in Space. So it's a provocative novel about a unique being with the power to create or destroy worlds. That sounds interesting. He was unique and alone, a rogue in space. He had no name, no language, no friends. He had not been born, and he could not multiply. He had just happened, 
an accidental combination of atoms that could think and learn and do a lot of incredible things. He had floated free in space for billions of years, and for all he knew, he was the only living thing in the universe. So when he met three human beings wrangling and bickering in their funny-looking spaceship, his whole life changed, because he suddenly knew that he could make them do anything he wanted. That sounds really good. Okay, I'm on board. Frederick Brown, you, you locked in your place on that shelf. Okay, I wish I had more Frederick Brown right now, but that's the only one I've got. So we have some John Brunner next, the whole man. So by the author of Stand on Zanzibar. This is not Stand on Zanzibar. I'm guessing it's not nearly as good as Stand on Zanzibar. What kind of man was Gerald Housen? Born in the gutter with the body of a cripple, he was raised in harsh poverty and ridicule, and he grew up with a mind of transcendent power. It doesn't sound that great. Um, but it's less than 200 pages. And I know John Brunner is one of the mainstay names in classic science fiction. Obviously, if I had stand on Zanzibar, I'd be keeping that reading that. If you've read The Whole Man, let me know. Should it stay or should it go? Because part of this idea of behind the library tour is to evaluate because I've gotten books like this in you know eBay lot boxes and I've never evaluated whether or not I want them so there are probably dozens of books here that I could prove without any regret at all so we have Cinnabar by Edward Bryant a city at the center of time where infinite possibilities converge Come to Cinnabar, where the turbulent time stream cascades into a multi-dimensional vortex. There lies Cinnabar, an opalescent dream city as near as memory as as far as the future, just minutes or millennia, leagues or light years away. Here dwell the shining immortals, Cougar Lou Landis, the last hero who stalks dreams across the sands of Zanzibar, or Sinzo Cinnabar, Jeez. Jade Blue, the soft furred cat mother who mourns her lost mind kittens. Sensuous sex star Tourmaline Hayes and her sometimes lover Timnath Obregon, a not quite mad scientist who tampers with time, come to Cinnabar, the city at the center of time. That, my friends, sounds like a Garbagas book. I don't know what you think, but, you know, having a uh, sensuous, sensuous sex star one of the main characters. But this is this is probably Garb August. 176 pages. We might hang on to it just for that. We'll see. I'm not sold. And then we finish this 10 here with Lois McMaster Bujold, Paladin of Souls, which I think is one that I, I've read something by her, and it's been a long time. So it says, follow Lois McMaster Bujold, one of the most honored authors in the field of fantasy and science fiction, to a land threatened by treacherous war and beset by demons. As a royal dowager released from the curse of madness and manipulated by an untrustworthy god, is plunged into desperate struggle to preserve the endangered souls of a realm. I think this is book two in a series. Uh, I think Curse of Chalion is the book that I've read. I think that is what comes before this. But uh, it's been a long time. I need to revisit Curse of the Chalion. So there we go. There's 10 books. So let me know on a couple of those books. Terry Brooks, uh, the John Brunner. Weigh in, please. Let me know. Should, should they stay? Should they go? I don't know. I will catch you later.